Good morning, this is Pastor Marvin Osborne with First Baptist Church of Birmingham, Ohio, and I hope you're well today. Today I want to talk about Satan's apples. Satan's apples. Uh, you remember the story in the garden, and uh, whether it was an apple, which I think that's just folklore, uh, some uh, Jewish um, uh, historians would say maybe it was a pomegranate, whatever it was, whatever piece of fruit it was, it was something that tempted Eve. Uh, she was lured in by the uh, false advertisements of, of the serpent, you know, that it was going to make one wise, so you're going to be able to uh, think like God, and and uh, began to question uh, the the teachings of and the instructions of Almighty God. And you know that uh, the Bible says that we are lured away by the lust of flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. And and it's so true. That's Satan's tactics, and that's the way it's always been. And uh, all of us, at one time or another, have fallen into those traps. We believed Satan's lies. We were, in a sense, like Eve in that garden. And God promised us, you know, if we give in to that lustful temptation that somehow we're going to res to achieve something. If we just take something that's really not ours, or if we have that relationship with that person, or we uh, indulge in this uh, certain vice, that somehow we are going to achieve some kind of personal satisfaction. But many of us uh, find out the hard way that there's always worms in, in Satan's apples. There's always a, a catch to it. There's always a hook at the end of the line. You think about a fish who's uh, minding its own business and all of a sudden he sees this worm um, in his environment and, and the worm looks good and the worm looks enticing and the worm uh, looks like it's dinner and then all of a sudden he bites into it and he realizes that that worm is on the end of a hook. And by the time that he got that worm, the worm, I mean, the hook got him and all of a sudden he's the fisherman's dinner. And that happens to all of us uh, in life that we believe Satan's lies, that we don't realize that there is a worm in that apple, there is a hook at the end of the line, and and none of us, if uh, no matter who we are and how long we've been saved, and um, are susceptible, and will receive the just recompense of of our actions. We think of um, those who attend Alcoholics Anonymous, and I'm thankful that there is an organization like that to help those who have. Who are suffering from alcoholism and I've known people that have benefited from those um, that organization but they exist because somewhere along the line uh, someone enticed uh, them into uh, uh, to getting drunk or getting a drink and not realizing they had the propensity to become addicted to that and and then they began that what looked enticing began to take over them you think of that with heroin and and other forms of drugs and you wonder how can people today possibly get involved with that because um, when they we hear of death after death after death but we live with the lie and the uh, with the concept that it's not going to happen to us and uh, but it does happen to people just like us and it will happen to us if we get involved do you think of there's the, the the rehab industries are there because people have believed Satan's lies. We think about um, uh, the abortion industry exists because people have believed Satan's lies, and and um, it's just over and over again. You know, Satan promises freedom, but that hook always enslaves us, doesn't it? He promises pleasure. But you know what? It brings about brokenness. You think about he promises life, but he, he brings about death. For the wages of sin is death. And so we, we think about Satan's apples and we think about the repercussions of our giving in. 
the repercussions of Eve and Adam uh, giving in to uh, Satan's temptation is something that we all have encountered, billions of people, ever, ever since. We look at the the story of the the parable of the um, of the uh, prodigal son, and remember the story. He wanted his inheritance early, and and he believed the lies, you know. And he went and he took that money, and he lived in wanton, lascivious um, lifestyle, and and um, and eventually the money left. His friends left. A drought came, and he ended up giving uh, feeding the pigs and. And, you know, a lot of people end up that way, don't they? They believe the promises and, um, and you know, the false advertising of Satan that, uh, that deceives so many. And we fail to look around us and see those who are suffering because they made those uh, decisions that we're about to go in. We're, we can be wise or we can be foolish. We can believe the Lord and live uh, a life of 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 God's grace or we can go by the world and and suffer the repercussions of um of our choices we need to understand our we make choices and our choices make us we make choices and our choices make us we are the product of the choices we have made in life I was passing by, and I know this is going to upset some people, but I was passing by a homeless person, and I had my 14-year-olds, twin 14-year-olds in the car, and and I, I tell them, you know, that by and large, and I'm not saying that there's, and I've told them this, I said, you know, sometimes it's life just happens, and, you know, you, you got a bills that they can't pay or whatever else. I said, but by and large, those people are there because they made choices. In life, they made choices to get into drugs. They made choices um, to not get an education. Made choices of not going to work. They made choices. And again, I'm not discounting mental illness. I'm not discounting our 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 uh, those who who served and in 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 our military forces had post traumatic stress syndromes or anything like that. But by and large, I said, by and large. Um, people make a profession out of begging on the street. They make a pretty good living if they, uh, uh, um, if they so desire because people feel guilty because they have much and they have so little. People have choices and choices make them. And, um, and we all live by the choices we make. And either we're going to believe God or we're not. Either we're going to abstain from evil and and abhor that sin, uh, uh, the the enticements of this world, or we're going to suffer the consequences for our actions. You and I have a choice in life, um, and whether we're going to believe God, and those choices, whether we're going to believe God uh, or not, are eventually going to be uh, what we're going. It's going to eventually. The outcome of that's eventually what we're going to become. And you give in to sin, and that sin is going to take over your life one way or another. And so you and I have a choice. I pray that you make the right choices. You follow the Lord. You cut off that relationship that you shouldn't be having. You uh, turn that television channel off that you shouldn't be watching. You, you, you do what you're supposed to do and let God work his good work in your life. Amen. This is Pastor Marvin Osborne saying God loves you and I love you as well and I'll talk to you soon.